Hey, what's going on Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another discussion video. If you're panicking about what to do for PPG Dallas, if you're not sure what to sideboard, if you're not sure what to expect, if you're not sure what you're going to see, or if you just want to hear some discussion about what is going to be popular at that event or what's going to be played at that event, you've come to the right video. So today we're going to talk about my thoughts moving into PPG Dallas, what to expect, what you should sideboard, how you should play, a few things like that. Before we get into this video, guys, if you're new to the channel, definitely hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the notification bell to stay updated with awesome Dragon Ball Super content that I post here. If you guys are looking for a community for Dragon Ball Super, check out the Discord link in the description below. Amazing group of people. Then answer any question you have, I guarantee it. And finally, guys, if you like the channel, if you want to support the channel, or if you want to read up some competitive content right before Dallas, check out the Patreon in the description below. For a dollar a day, you get access to all the articles, and it'll actually, I guarantee it'll help you a lot for PUG Dallas. But with that being said, we'll get into this free video, a little bit of free information for you. So here we go PPG dallas the first real event since we had the celebration events right so uh a lot of people did knock on the celebration events for whatever reason because you know they weren't real events or major events or free entry which i don't really see as much of a reason to knock on their competitive level uh the set did just come out a week before the celebration started so that might be a little bit you know the the, the format was still in the testing waters but honestly I don't think too much has changed, except I think the new best deck has found its place in the form of Super Shine on Height. I do think that is the best deck in the format. I think that's a deck you need to be able to beat going into this event. However, I think that the most represented deck, which you can kind of tell from the big leader boy, I think the most represented deck is going to be Skillless Goku for a few reasons. Uh, a few reasons. The deck, from personal experience, is very fun to play. It's very fun to pilot. You kind of get a different feel for every game, every single round. You know, no game feels the same, which in my opinion makes the deck very fun to play. It's very, very cheap. The deck is easily put together for, I don't know, I think I think the one drop Gokus are anywhere from five to ten dollars. And I think the rest of the deck is pretty much commons and rares. The only optional expensive card you can play is the Demigrass Seeker Rare, which you have to play, but you, you kind of don't have to play it because in the mirror match, it, it can be an auto win, but a lot of times your opponent can win through it and, and you tapped out for that play, you could be in big trouble because if your opponent's able to repopulate the board or if you didn't answer your opponent's board in the first place, that Demigras isn't going to do too much for you if it gets negated, right? You're not going to be able to really plow through your opponent's last three life tapping out for it. So this card, in my opinion, is optional. If you guys saw my last deck profile for this deck, it was not included in that profile. I, I kind of talked about it. You didn't need it, especially because I think the five drop mass sand is just so strong this format that 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 should be your main deck card if you're playing skillless because it's it's amazing in the mirror match it's good against super shenron for banishing the bulmas so they can't recycle them it's decent against aod it, just, it has a lot of good purposes it's really good against rogue so i think that's the overrealm to main if you're gonna play skillless demigra i think is either either don't play it or maybe sideboard it for the mirror match specifically but even then i think you can do better things in the mirror match i think you could be more aggressive in the mirror match and kind of win that way so skillless i think will be the most highly represented deck i think the celebration events do kind of support that uh you know they had so much representation in top cut the deck's incredibly cheap to build the deck's very fun to play there's so many different variations there's another thing people love about the deck is there's so many different color combinations uh the really popular ones being red uh yellow and blue green not so much but you might even run into it here and there so i think skills will be the most heavily represented deck next to that i think super shenron uh the one of the three super shenron variants i think will be the next most represented deck well one of those reasons is the deck is very very cheap to build there's actually no real money cards in the deck except for maybe like bardock the progenitor or path to greatness which are not way out of reach for most competitive players uh you know they're not in, in the case of like a 400 dollars seeker rare which we'll talk about in, just a, in a few minutes but yeah, I do think Super Shadowrun will be the next most represented deck for two reasons. One, it is very cheap. There's no, there's no real crazy money cards in the deck. Uh, and then you have like the Storm variant, which has Bardock. You have the Blue Yellow variant, which I think Bean is probably the most expensive card in that deck realistically which is not even that bad at, at what seven dollars a copy. And then the Height of Mastery build I think will be also very highly represented especially because it just did win an event uh you know people do like to follow the top decks that win uh you know an event prior to the event coming up so i do think that super shenron height will be the most represented super shenron variant and i do think it'll be the second most represented deck in the entire event because of its price tag and because of how powerful it is and i do think it's the best deck in the format i do think that super shenron height is the deck you have to be able to beat this weekend that is gonna be kind of tough to do but it is possible and we'll talk about that in just a little bit Next, I do think that uh, Broly, the green Broly deck, and I do think that the Kid Boo Dende deck are both going to be very, very popular going forward. However, I think their representation is going to be a little bit skewed because of the price tag of these decks. You know, if we, if we look at Arcane Absorption Majin Boo, if we look at the Broly Seeker Rare, both cards are just about at $400 a copy, which is 
absolutely insane. You know, it's crazy how, you know, in the secondary market, there's such a low dip between most of the cards. You know, nothing really even hits like the $20 mark for the most part, even the $15 mark. But then you have these two cards that are both about $400 a piece. So I do think that those are going to be two really big factors when you're talking about uh, playability for these decks. Although I do think you still need to be prepared for them because I think the likelihood of placing one, at least one of each deck in Swiss is going to be pretty high. You know, you need to be prepared for that Broly deck. You need to be prepared for that AOD deck. I think those are really important. What else might you see at PPG Dallas? You might see Chain Zeno. You know, Pan has still been performing very decently at these past few events. It's got its tops. It did go undefeated at Chicago, which is very impressive, especially in a field of decks that it seems to have a hard time against. But Chain Zeno, like if you can resolve double Chain Zeno in a game, you're going to be in pretty good shape no matter what you're playing against. So that's always a factor. Make sure you're prepared for that. And uh, outside of that, you might run into Janemba. I do think Janemba is dying out in popularity pretty considerably i really do think that deck is falling out of popularity but i think we'll start to see these waves right but the more silver bullets we get i think we'll start to see these waves of decks becoming popular and then decks falling out of popularity when you know the silver bullet is played a lot obviously janemba will start to decline and then once tn stops seeing play in sideboards i think tn will come uh, i think janemba will come back into the scene so i think this is gonna be the event that janemba has low representation uh, any, anything i said by the way i could definitely be wrong these are just my thoughts based on the, the prior events based on the knowledge we have based on the information we have based on the data we have so i do think janemba will see a lower amount of play in this format but i do also think that yellow frieza dende wish is going to be a good deck as well it's going to be a good, a good contender it's got decent matchups against uh the aod deck because you can rip the combo pieces out of their hand like especially the bobbity it's got a decent broly matchup because again you can do the same thing and you can go wide and you can clear their board pretty well it's got a somewhat decent super shutdown matchup because it can play nimbus which is the best card in the format right now possibly which we'll talk about a little bit later uh so that deck is also well positioned so those are all the well positioned decks i think i do think you'll be facing skillless the most i think most of your rounds will be skillless uh so definitely prepare for that now we're talking about all these decks to prepare for but um how are you gonna prepare for them well i've got a little bit of a sideboard note on the right over here uh, that talks about some cards you should probably consider in your side deck. Mine is Killy's Own, an amazing card to consider in the side deck. No matter what deck you're playing, if you face down Green Broly or even Yellow Broly, Yellow Broly is still somewhat popular, especially with the Height Package, maybe the Storm Package. Uh, if you, but especially that Green Broly deck, if you face down that Green Broly deck, you need to be prepared with Killy's Own for why? Because the Green Broly deck provides you a situation where you have to play against a ton of cards. You have to play against Shocking Death Ball. You have to play against Nimbus. You got to play against their Broly Pops. You got to play around their Super Combo. You got to play around uh, Cold Bloodlust, is the, and that's the reason you would play Killy Zone. Also, Preemptive Strike potentially. So if you can just Killy Zone, draw a free card, and then just say, okay, I don't have to worry about two of your deck's major threats. That's a that's a high value card right there. So Killy Zone is incredibly high value going into this event, I believe, uh, because of like the yellow decks and because of the green decks. I think Killy Zone is very well positioned as a cyborg card. Dark Power Black Mass Sand. This card, in my opinion, is the most well-rounded sideboard card. If you want a card in your sideboard or even main board that hits every single matchup, I think Dark Power Black Mass Sand is the card to do it. Uh, Chain Zeno, you, you you damage their combo. AOD, if they want to keep reviving off, off Child's Wish, they're going to discard cards. Super Shenron, it's very good in Super Shenron. If they want a Bulma loop, it's very good in that case. It's uh, it's very good in those instances, and it's also a self-awakener, which in, in slower matchups, especially like sometimes skillless, will stall you out because they want to just gain a ton of advantage while you just sit there and do nothing. Uh, Dark Power Black Mass Sand is just an all-around amazing utility card, so I definitely want you to consider that in your sideboard going into Dallas if you're not sure with the sideboard. Crisis Crusher is another great card, especially if you're playing any type of uh, Rogue Shenron deck, but it's also good against Skillless in general because you do get to clear their Android 8s, you get to clear their one-drop Gokus, it's just high value over the duration of the entire game. Then we look at Borgos and Whis, two more anti-Super Shenron cards, and you know, you're going to hit all the super center variants with these cards and uh they have to hit their crisis crusher otherwise you're gonna be um in a good position i've talked about this before as well there's kind of like a trick to playing all the one drops you know i when i play against super center personally i do go for the strategy of spamming the one drop hate just to slow them down that's also because i'm a skillless player and if the game can just extend for a little while longer i'll have a good shot to win with skillless but yeah so i like to i let them i try to let them commit to a board first right so i like to let them like play their first or second bulma and then when it comes back to my turn after their second turn when they're usually going to start doing their bulma looping then i want to drop the weiss then i want to drop the borgos you know so and then i want to drop the dark power black mass sand so that they have a much less likely opportunity to drop crisis crusher because they can't swing the leader to clear their board with comboing so that means they're gonna have to either child's wish or something like that uh, child's wish out a crisis crusher which is pretty negative for them honestly uh, it's really not worth it and even if they do wish out the one crisis and i have like 
let's just say a Borgos and a Dark Power Black Mass Sand, they can only clear one threat, which means their turn is still pretty much going to be over. So I do like to go for that kind of strategy. Let them commit to a board first so they can't crisis you as easily. And then, you know, try and go from there. But with that being said, if you do that type of thing, you have to be putting pressure on every single turn after that. You have to be following up with the pressure. Otherwise, uh, they'll just play through the hate. They'll play through the Weeses. They'll play through the Borgoses. So that's one thing to be really aware of in, the, in that matchup. The next thing that... If you can play it in your main deck, play them in your main deck because they're so good. Crusher Ball and Flying Nimbus. Like I mentioned before, Flying Nimbus is probably the best card in this format. You know, Every deck, or a lot of the decks for the most part, they're trying to either go wide and kill you, they're trying to go tall and kill you with multiple swings in the case of Height or the case of the Broly Seeker Rare. And Nimbus will really, really punish those decks and it'll, just, it'll help you get to the next turn. And sometimes... All you need to do is get to the next turn in order to win. Sometimes all you got to do is Crusher Ball that AOD Boo. Sometimes all you got to do is Nimbus Super Shenron Storm, and you can just make it to the next turn, and you can just win. Battering Laser is a card, guys, but in a lot of instances, either they're only playing a one of Battering Laser, especially in the case of, like, Super Shenron, or it's in their life, or, it's, or you can check if they mill it. So even though Battering Laser is a card, Nimbus is still one of your best bets to surviving this format. Uh, so if your deck can play yellow, I think your deck is incredibly well positioned. That's why I really, really like uh, yellow skillless. That's why I posted the deck profile earlier this week. That's why Green Broly is great with yellow. That's why Super Shinron is one of the best decks in the format. And the only deck that's really not playing yellow right now is the AOD Boo deck. That's just because that's the deck you need to play yellow to beat. That's one of the decks you need to play yellow to beat. It's either that or Super Shenron. And uh, if your deck can play yellow, I think it's going to be really well positioned. Crusher Ball, of course, excellent against AOD, excellent against Broly for hitting that secret rare or hitting any of their big Brolies. So, guys, that's pretty much the PPG Dallas prep video. Let me know your guys' thoughts down in the comments below. I hope this was helpful. Uh, good luck to anyone going to Dallas. I wish I could be there, but it is Easter weekend for some reason. So, unfortunately, I can't go, but I wish I could see you guys all there. But have a good time. Best of luck. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below, and we'll see you next time. Hey, what's going on, Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another vid. Hang on, hang on. This is the end card, not a... Ah, screw it. I'm going to play some Pokemon. See ya!